business strategy. I mean, they got professionals. Professionals. They sat down to strategize. If you come like this, okay. If you come like this, people are going to react this way. Let's settle down and study. What do we do? <laughs> I love God because God is not behind conspirators. I'm telling you. Look at Absalom. Absalom, first Samuel, um, second Samuel, rather, 15, 12. The Bible said the conspiracy was very strong. The kind of conspiracy that you say, oh, David is finished. There are some people you think he's finished with them. God lifts them up again. Absalom sent to Ahithophel, the Gileonite, David's counselor. For, from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong for the people continually, for the people increased continually with Absalom. Bring out that translation. There's a particular translation. It's the message that there's, there's a way to put that message or the amplified. The conspiracy grew powerful and Absalom supporters multiplied. Ahithophel was David's Ahithophel was David's counselor. He knew the in and out of David. He knew David's strength, David's weaknesses, David's excesses. He knew everything. He knew the weakest time of David. He knew David's low moments. And he was now with Absalom. The conspiracy was strong. In this life, if there is anything you must hold so tight, it's God. It's God. Hold God! There are people that won't give up. They, they won't give up. They won't give up. They are pursuing. They are doing everything. They won't give up. They are planted. Are you ready to pray? By repeating that prayer with you this morning, whoever has made me a project of pain, Lord, arise, make them your project of torment. Since they make you a project, let God make them his project. Whoever has made me a project of pain, oh Lord, arise, make them your project of torment. God will make them cry continually. God will make them cry continually. God will make them weep perpetually. God will make them weep perpetually. Make them cry continually. Make them weep perpetually. Ha ha ha. Ke gayata. Shagataba. If I tell you to pray, pray. Pray. You can never, you can never try all you want. Try all you want. When God is standing with a man, God will stand to defend him. God will stand to defend him. It doesn't matter how many arrows come. It doesn't matter how they come. Are you ready to pray? You didn't hear what I said. Some people, you are their office. They, they, they go through your, um, if you are on a social media person, they go through all that just to check if you are smiling, if you are happy, if you are okay. They are just looking at that. Look, eh? So this, okay, okay, okay. They are so current. They follow, they, they know everything. They, they view it, they will never like your picture. They will never drop a comment. But you will know that they have viewed it. There are some people today, if you block their number now, in the next 10 minutes, they will call you with another number. But before you block them, they don't call you. I've said this before, that if somebody's on your contact for like 7 months, 8 months, 1 year, and doesn't talk to you, what are you doing? It's a message the Lord put in my spirit, but I'm sharing down the first Sunday because it has to be a live worldwide meeting. You don't have to miss that first Sunday of the month of August. There are some things that you, you must understand that have deep spiritual implications. We will take that prayer. Whoever has made me their project of pain, 
O oh Lord, arise, make them your project of torment. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whoever has made me their project of pain. O oh Lord, arise, make them your project of torment. Open your mouth and fire prayer. my father Thank I love you Jesus. Jesus we bless your name Amen. forever you will be the lamb upon God's throne Gladly bow my knees to worship you, my God. Forever you will be, forever you will be. The Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knees. Gladly bow my knees. Forever you. Forever you will be the lamb upon the throne. The lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knees. I gladly bow my
right now pray the spirit we love you Jesus Manda sa prakate la gadash Brako so prekete le desh 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 Brako so prekete in Jesus name Amen. Father we love you we love you in Jesus powerful name Amen and Amen clap those hands for the El Shaddai you may be seated you have taken quite some time let's run through something Matthew chapter 13 I'll just mention the verses that we are going to read, so we'll just run through them. Matthew chapter 13, 1 to 3. We'll read 10, we'll read 13, we'll read 34. Matthew 13. The same day went out, went Jesus out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together so that he went into a sheep and sat and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things unto them in parables saying behold a sower went forth to sow verse 10 and the disciples came and said why speaketh thou unto them in parables Verse 13, Therefore I speak to them in parables because they seeing, see not. Hearing, they hear not. Neither do they. Neither do they understand. Neither do they understand. Let's read verse 34. All, let's read verse 34 together loud and clear now. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parable. And without a parable spake he not unto them. Parables, the coded voice of God. Parables, the coded voice of God somebody say parable say, <laughs> say parables the coded say it again say the coded voice of God how many people know that God speaks from the beginning in fact this world is an evidence of the voice of God this world coming to be is an evidence that the heavens is suspended from the earth without a pillar. It's an evidence of the voice of God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and God said. Genesis 1 verse 6 and God said. Genesis 1 verse 9 and God said. Genesis 1 verse 11 and God said. Genesis 1 14 and God said. Genesis 1 20 God said. Genesis 1, 26, God said. 24, God said. 28, God said. 29, God said. Genesis 2, 18, God said. 
Genesis 3.13, God said. Genesis 3.14, God said. Genesis 3.22, and God said. Genesis 6.13, God said. Genesis 9.12, God said. God speaks. The Holy Ghost speaks. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, he that has ear, let him hear what the Spirit said. Revelation 2, 7, 2, 11. Revelation 3, 6. Revelation 3, 13. Revelation 3, 22. God speaks. I need you to understand that, that we don't serve a God that doesn't speak. God speaks. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? But the Bible says Jesus was communicating to people and he always spoke to them in parables. He spoke to them in parables. We are going to understand why we need to do that. But we need to know what a parable means. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly, heavenly meaning. A parable is a comparison of two similarities, of two similarly dissimilar objects. It's a, it's a comparison of two similarly dissimilar objects. A parable is a simple story that is used to illustrate moral and spiritual lessons. A simple story that is used to illustrate moral or spiritual lessons. A parable can be called an apologue. It can be called a repertory. A parable can be called a glimpse. A parable can be called a subliminary presentation. It can be called an encrypted utterance. An encrypted utterance. A subliminary presentation. A parable is a short allegory analogy. <laughs> Wait. It's a short allegory analogy used as a comparison and similitude a, a parable amen the hebrew word for parable is mashal but i like the greek word for parable it's called parablem the greek word for parable is called parablem you break it from you break it down to two words the word para in greek means beside and the word blame means to throw. So parablem means to throw beside. You want to say something, but you are not saying it directly. You are throwing something beside it that looks like it. Do you get what I'm saying? So parables. Jesus, that was his strength at that time. That was how he could communicate with people. And Jesus in the New Testament had over 70 parables. In fact, if you study that book of Mark, Matthew 13 alone, you will see seven parables, only that chapter. Seven parables. The book of Luke had more parables. It had 40 parables. The book of Matthew had 25. You will see over seven parables in that chapter 13. The parable of the sower is in verse 3 to 8 of Matthew 13. Begin to count them. The parable of the sower, number what? The parable of the weeds, 24 to 30, number. The parable of the mustard seed, 31 to 32, number. The parable of the hidden treasure, verse 44, number. The parable of the yeast, verse 33, number. The parable of the pearl, verse 45 to 46, number. The parable of the fishing net, verse 47 to 50, number. In one chapter. That was a parable. That was how I communicated to them. <laughs> so many of us today, God talks to us in parables. Sir, there is no mistake you have made in life that God did not warn you. But you didn't understand him because
because he spoke in parable. When you wake up in the night and you wake up and you saw a dream and you don't understand the dream, there is something God is trying to communicate to you. But the problem is it came as a parable so you didn't understand. Oh God, if you want to warn me and talk to me, why not talk to me in a language I don't understand? Why parable? <laughs> Why would you speak to me? Do you know every man or woman who got married today? Sir, God can speak to you in a parable through a dream. God can use the character of an individual as a parable to communicate to you. 90% of marriages today that had problems, God spoke to the men, the women in parables, but they did not understand. When a young man makes promises, he doesn't keep it. I'll see you by two. He comes by five. God is communicating to you that this is not a trustworthy person. When you call the lady, she keeps lying. You are picking up the sign. God is communicating to you, but you didn't. Look at a young man by the name of Samson. One of the biggest, in fact, the biggest problem of Samson's life was his connection to the Philistine. Samson saw a lady as he was going to present his parents to them. The Bible says a lion came against Samson. You know today, when people talk about Samson and the lion, they give it as a testimony. He told the lion, he told the lion. That lion was a restriction to prevent Samson from disaster. That lion was a parable saying to Samson, where yeah, you are going, you will not survive. But do you know what was supposed to be a tool to warn Samson? He destroyed it. That thing you see was God giving an instruction. Oh my God. If only the young man called Joseph understood that when he was seeing dreams, it was a parable. If only he understood the meaning of that parable, he would not have told the wrong young man who wasted his life. If he understood the meaning of that parable that came as a dream, he would have escaped the pit. He would have escaped the prison. He would have escaped the depression but when he dreamt he didn't understand he didn't know that God was talking to him as a parable you are going out on the journey you suddenly had a dream the Lord is trying to warn you but the problem is my father why talk to me when you can speak to me plainly in John chapter 10 verse 4, when he was talking about the death of Lazarus, John chapter 11, sorry, verse 14, when he was talking about the death of Lazarus, the Bible said Jesus spoke to them plainly, John 11, 14, he spoke to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So if you can speak to me plainly, Lord, why speaking in parable? There was a time when Jesus was communicating, the disciples were confused. But do you know when he was talking to them about the coming of the Holy Ghost, before he left them, he started talking to them plainly. In John 16, 29, one of the disciples asked him, they said, now you speak to us plainly, no more in parable. John 16, 29, now thou speakest plainly. And the disciples said unto him, lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no more proverb. It's now we seem to be understanding you because for 15 chapters we were following you, you were talking, we were just looking at you. We didn't have an idea. Sir, stop blaming God for that disaster. He warned you, but you didn't understand. Never blame God for any pain, any shame, any form of reproach, anything you are going through. If you sit down and cast your mind back, there are people that got married. After one child, two children, three, four, when they begin to look through all that happened before they got married, before they tied the knot, they saw the signs, but they didn't pick it. They saw all the symptoms, but they didn't pick it. Why? Because it came as a parable. Why parable, Lord, when you can speak to me plainly? Plainly. Plainly. Why use these symbols? Jesus was speaking in Matthew 13, 35. He said, this parable I speak is like a coded secret. 
that has been hidden for the foundation of the world. Matthew 13, 35. From, hidden from secret, hidden from the foundation of the world. 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 <laughs> Mark chapter 4, verse 13. He said to them, he said, if you do not understand this parable, how will you understand other parables? If I give you an elementary parable like this, you can't decode it. If a simple parable of you coming down from the car, walking to the road, and you came down and something happened, and yet you are about to embark on a journey, as simple as that parable is, what if I now give you, you are embarking on the journey, what if I now give you a parable of a mountain and a sky that, you can, that does not relate to traveling on the land, how will you understand that? There are many signs. Many times when you are going for a visa, you want to go for a visa, you go once, you go twice, you go thrice, you start binding God instead of Satan. Some are binding God. God was behind many refusers. Because he knows, he's already saw what will happen at the airport, but you don't understand. He knows you're going there. You won't survive it, but you don't understand. The disciples Jesus, you know times when Jesus speaks, in fact, there was a time he spoke in parable. They had to ask John the beloved, say, please ask him what that thing means. He's talking over our heads. He's telling us statements we cannot put together. We cannot understand. We cannot understand. We cannot comprehend. Many mistakes would have been avoided. But they came as a parable. Can God really speak plainly? The Bible says, speaking of Moses, when God was talking about Moses, in Numbers chapter 12, verse 5, he said, among the servants of God, he said, God was speaking to Miriam and Aaron. He said, when I want to speak to a prophet, he said, I will speak to them in similitude of speech. And the Lord came down to the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and caught Aaron, Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Verse 6, he said, hear my words. If I be a prophet among you, I the Lord, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known to him in a vision and in a, and we speak in a dream. In other words, I will speak to him through parables. If there's a prophet, I will speak through parables. But my servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my arms? What do I do? Verse 8. Verse 8. Him, with him will I speak mouth to mouth. In that word, God will say to Moses, come, let me whisper something. Let's just, let's have conversation. Even apparently not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then we are ye not afraid to speak against my servant. So it means that there are certain people, when God wants to talk to them, he doesn't use the kind of dreams you see. He talks to them direct. God wants to speak to you about your home, about your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. He starts showing you symbols, showing you symbols. But they say there are some people, he doesn't show them like that. He shows them the real picture. He shows them everything. There's a class. Wouldn't you want to be in that class? That's why a lady can be surrounded with five men, four men. She doesn't know who to marry. When she prays, she sees something. She saw herself coming out from a car, saw somebody carrying her in the car. She wake up more confused. Because the person she saw carrying her in the car, literally, in physical life, has no car. So that confuses her. She doesn't understand that car. Miss a journey. And a lot of them go and meet people who furtherly confuse them in the name of interpretation. In fact, they'll say there are some books called Dream Interpretation. People are now reading that. I'm not against it. Whoever wrote it may have a revelation from God, but the reason why you have to be careful is that interpretations are personal. It's not general. What a serpent means to a person going through poverty is not what a serpent means to a person going through barrenness. What a serpent means to a person going through delay in marriage is not what a serpent means to a person whose child is stubborn. So you cannot have an already laid down an already regulated and already stereotyped interpretation that if you see this this is what it means if you see this it is individual it works here may not work somewhere else okay 
So you now need God. That's why when, when you have a dream and you walk to someone and interpret this dream, a wise interpreter, which is a prophet, we want to know two, three minutes details of your life. He said, tell me what, what's happening in your life. From what is happening, he cannot interpret what you saw. But anyone that says you saw this, ah, no, 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 this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Now, it is, I wish I was communicating here. Hmm. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Sometimes God speaks, why will God speak to us in parable? To get our attention. God will speak to us in parable to get our attention. You are in a hurry. There are things you want to do. God needs you to slow down to get your attention. He communicates in parable. Why will God speak to us in parable? To give us instruction. To get our attention. To give us instruction. Why would God give us a to us in parable? To give us a warning. Why would God speak to us in parable? To give us correction. Why would God speak to us in parable? To give us direction. <laughs> so God can actually Speak plainly. The disciples said to him at his demise, at his departure, his exit, in the place I quoted in John 16 29, they say, How come you now? How come you now? We followed you all this while. How come you now? I told us the story of a man who had a very massive church. I told us the story some Sundays ago, who had a very massive church, and the church was embroiled in confusion embroiled in a lot of issues and troubles and all kinds there were cliques and gang up and all of that was happening and the man was confused and when he went to pray a voice came and said give me ten, 16 brides give me 16 brides give me 16 brides the pastor do you understand from the church he married 16 wives what was it you heard it before why are you acting as if it's new? <laughs> the hell should be for those who didn't hear it. Hell. I see what I'm saying is the first time you are hearing it. Eh? Alright. The man married 16 wives. He was so confident of what he saw. Now such a person, you cannot see anything on. There are some people, they are so confident of what they saw. Even if what they saw was wrong or they didn't understand the meaning of what they saw. A guy was in my office and two elders were arguing with him. The man saw, he had a, he had a voice, he didn't see, he had a voice. The voice said to him that he should marry another wife, he should send his wife away. He came to my office with audacity. He said God told him, he, he, no, he, said God. He, said God, he had a voice and the voice said he should marry another wife. And two or then for there we are saying, he said, lie. You didn't hear God. You didn't hear God. And I had asked them, he didn't say he heard God. He said he had a voice. Is it your voice? I said, sir, give me your hand, Joe. You had a voice. He said, Abi, Abi. I said, yes, you had a voice. The voice said you should send your wife away. He said, yes, and marry a new wife. He said, yes, sir. I said, you had a voice. Don't mind these people. Sir, it is the voice of the devil. I said, you heard the devil's voice. It's a voice. The devil's voice is a voice. You heard the voice because God cannot speak against his word. Cannot go contrary to his word. He left the church. The rest is history. And the man married 16 wives. The church that was already in confusion went into further confusion. Such when people are on that intense manipulation or improper understanding, you cannot convince them. You only pray for them. I told the youth, I said that's why it's called ignorance. 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 It means you have ignored knowledge. You ignored it. It was available, but you what? Ignored it. Imagine 16 wives. 
And on the, he, he, of course, he didn't live long after that. With, in fact, with 16 wife, you are finished. One wife is a problem. You know, I carry 16. That's not polygamy. That's multigamy. 16 wives. He didn't live long. Passed out. He died. On his burial, the Holy Ghost came on someone and began to prophesy. And God said he took him out. Because God told him he wanted 16 branches. He should break the church into 16 branches. Home cell becomes a branch. Home cell, break it. But as far as he was concerned, it was a bride. The bride God was talking about was for him, God, bride. The church is the bride of God. But the man wanted a bride for himself. But the problem is this. If the man had heard the voice clearly, I asked myself, that came as a parable. If you had understood it plainly, he would not have made such a mistake. How many of you understand what I'm trying to? If you're about to go on a journey and you just slept, you heard this journey you are going, don't go. You saw it. You saw yourself in the car. The car almost had an accident. You came out, you survived. The car ran under a trailer. You open your eyes. Will you go? That's plain. But if you saw somebody in a dream and the person was crying that they brought a news to somebody else that that person saw blood you are calling you just because yeah now wow this is nice so father lord god almighty but my family member there's nobody in my family that is your journey but you cannot understand it because it's coming as what it is a coded voice of god Coded, encrypted. It's an encrypted, a subliminary. There are things that are spiritual. Sir, that's how the devil also enters into people. Are you following me? When the devil wants to enter people, he, he doesn't come as Satan. He paints himself. I was listening to, is it, is it, who presents, is it the youth? Or uh, the first people that were black and black that presented. Was that the youth? And there was a song they were singing. Do remember? It's a demonic song. <laughs> Extremely devilish. Wait till first, uh, first, first of August. I will explain some things to you. One of the things God has given me, I'm a researcher. I'm a well of knowledge. I research. That song, hold on. That song, part of it is Latin. The other part is in no language. This word has 6,500 languages. Yet you choose not to use any one. It's a coded statement. That is why when I see gospel musicians who are trying to become like secular artists, I laugh. There's a, there's a musician, his last name is Todd. I won't call his first name. Because they can sue me. Yeah, there are many thoughts. He said, when they release, he's born again now. He said, when they release songs, when he's still in the raw file, their management under the record label they follow, we said, tell them to bring it. They will bring it. He said, they don't know what they do with it. Later, he found out they will call witch doctors to release spirits into the song. When they release spirits to the song, they will tell them to take it back to the studio. They will take it back. When they finish finally, before they mass produce, they bring it again. As soon as it enters the market, give them one month, 30 million views. Spirits take the song and begin to run with it. In a particular part of Chicago, they discover people committed suicide. Young men were just dying, dying, dying. They entered into them and began to interview and find out. They discovered that 70% of those that died were addicted to two particular songs. I'm not going to mention them. That's how demonic you see a Nigerian artist who come out and just sing a song. 20 million views. And you are saying, ah, what's going on? Sir, check around the boy. 
check around the girl check around the woman blood blood sacrifice blood blood lives are going to to maintain that growth am i talking to somebody here and you that cannot kill a fowl you are saying why am i not blowing why am i not like them if you follow god he will give you your own success to a level I don't know why I'm getting to that. This is not a message for this Sunday. It's a message for three weeks' time. But it doesn't come like that. Some of the songs we will come very nice. Heal the world. Make it a better place. It sounds philosophical. But there are many people that song has fired depression into them. They join it and start crying. <laughs> Pew, so sad. Am I talking to somebody here? Satan, Bible says, he transforms himself into an angel of light. Do you know how many Nigerian gospel artists, sorry, Nigerian secular artists have had a covenant with premature death? They are ready to go anytime so long they go all over the world. They don't care. How many are ready to sacrifice their home, their wives, their children? Sacrifice anything just to do well. You don't understand. You don't understand on social media you're not following men of god you are following them you're not following a man of god the wealthiest man today in africa is in kano many people are believing god for wealth but they don't follow such a man online to know how he became wealthy you're not following successful people you are following you are following jaga jaga jogo jogo scatter scatter that's the person you are following i might don't worry. I will explain to you. I will explain some things to you. So that when, when I begin to explain different things, so you know how people's life are destroyed, then you now understand what? What? Promote it. Go and maybe carry your song. Promote it. Do everything. You can't be like them. Because what their, what their own things have been taken by spirits. Spirits are running. With them running with them you just allow the holy ghost take you the way it's leading you empower you and even in the midst of all of this demonic you are still breaking through you think god has not tried now can i shock you not only do they just go out there to run with the demons not only do they go out there to run with the demons and covenants that spirit also fights and suppresses music that are divine so it's a two-edged thing you see a, song, a person wants to present a song in church. She will spend 40 minutes doing makeup. 30 minutes doing... I just say, look at this one. Not even knowing that you are coming to stand before principalities and powers. Idibro, no vigilo, no speaking in tongues, nothing. You stand publicly. You spend hours makeup. Hours, yeah, do uniform, do costume. And the major part, which is the Holy Ghost. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you know why the devil is interested? Hold on. Do you know why the devil is interested in music? Because that was his office. When God cast him down, he didn't leave that office. He only left the position, but did not leave that office. That was his tool. So Satan is very interested in music. Interested. When I was coming, I was hearing Dory. Yeah. From where I was, I said, fire the Holy Ghost. On the atmosphere. On the atmosphere of that church. I said, I read the fire of the Holy Ghost on the atmosphere. Every contrary devil that these people are inviting because of ignorance of they don't know what this song is all about. Such devils you cannot locate anybody. As, as they are seated there, you will enter no one. I was as they were doing their thing here, me, I was blasting in prayer. Was blasting as any contrary spirit because they are not aware. If they know, they won't use it. Why why don't you research? Why do you just carry things you don't know? That's one of the the, the, the it's God gave me. There are many things I come when I when I decipher that this is evil. I do, it doesn't matter how, how popular it is. I say I won't do it. There's nothing in this life you will tell me. In this life, criticize me or call me names, no problem. I'm, I'm okay with it. But there's nothing in this life you will tell me that will make me bow down to anything, whether you call it Mary or not. I cannot because it's not survival. Thou shalt bow down to no other. There's nothing you tell me today 
that will make me believe that Mary is praying for me. It's the Holy Ghost that make it intercession. I'm not against any denomination. If they believe in it, it's okay. God bless them. I love them. I love them. Okay? But we, we, we don't have to believe the same thing. So, I, I sit down a lot. There's a lady called Whitney Houston. One of the most outstanding singers in the world. Go back and research how she died. Research how she died. Okay. Billions of dollars she had. Her song was top notch. Top the chart. She breaks the chart. Not even top the chart. She gave all out. She willed everything to her daughter. Her daughter died like her. Drugs. It's only the grandmother who is a born again, a leader in the church. They now gave her the wealth. She's the one enjoying the wealth now. Because she's born again. You want the devil to give you fame? He will ask you, what can you exchange? Not be everything that they talk. The things I know. The things that I know. That God has shown me about people. There's a popular person that is singing and the rest. I called on my pastor. I told him the date. The date. That guy will die. I told him the date. I said, if that guy crossed that date, I'm not a pastor. If that person crossed that date, I said, this particular person, see, 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 see. I said, I've already seen a covenant, an exchange entered. I said, you watch what I'm telling you. I said, watch. And I gave him a sign after I spoke to him. And when that thing happened, he called me. He said, well, she was panicking. I said, cool down. There are some of us looking today. If you know the goodness of God on your life, you will walk on your lane. You walk on your lane. You just say, Father, thank you. Thank you. I will just move with you. I'm not interested. I'm not, I'm not in competition with nobody. Kalamushata. You know, you want my attention. Why not talk to me plainly? You want my attention. Why not speak to me? Do you know when he caught somewhere, he caught somewhere as a parable to the voice of Eli. But somewhere prayed a prayer in first Samuel 3 9. Speak, Lord for thy servant hear it speak to me in the language that we understand I don't want to be confused speak Lord for thy servant hear it I want to hear the voice of God clearly when God is talking to me I want to hear his voice accurately I want to hear his voice precisely I want to hear his voice concisely I refuse to live a parable life I refuse to live a dilly dally life I want to know when God is talking speak to me plainly Lord I don't want to be confused did you call me or not should i marry this guy or not should i do this business or not speak to me plainly i refuse to be confused i refuse to be frustrated i have waited this far because i am confused speak to me plainly am i traveling abroad or not should i stay in nigeria should i do this business speak to me <laughs> Shaligada. I went to America one time and um, somebody gave me an opening and said there is this place they sell um, I, don't, I forgot the state I can't remember the state I was in in the US and I can't remember and the person said you know in America America is an up-to-date country, as it were. When they're using a wheelchair, it has to be 2021 wheelchair to carry 2021 patient. In Nigeria, they can use 1969 wheelbarrow to carry. In fact, when somebody's on the, in Nigeria, when somebody's on the wheelchair, does he check the year? As I just mentioned, 2021, now it's, it's, it's amusing to you. 
So when they have equipment, they have maybe 2019 crutches. Okay? They don't use it in 2020. They abandon it. So that is what they now send to us and we call brand new. You don't understand what I'm saying? We call them what? Brand new. All right. So I went into, the, into this um, health organization and they said they were going to give us a full container. Crutches, wheelchairs, figs, lab coats, massive container. If you put all of those things together, you cannot get them in this country for anything less than a hundred million naira. Yeah. And they said to us, that was going to come, we we'll pay less than five million, and I announced it. I was very happy. I went around the town, this town. I said, This is a good opportunity. I have, a, I have business sense. As this opportunity to start a nice hospital, I will equip it. I will call doctors, give it to them on contract. Whatever you make, end of the month, me 50%, you 50%. When God called me, he didn't take away my sense. I was happy. I said I was going to open. So I went around looking for land with that mentality. I, I saw the place. It was nice. And the Lord said, have you asked me? And I went to prayer. And the Lord asked me, say, what do you want to open? I said, a massive. In fact, I already got people from Abuja who had come to town. They wanted to inspect so that we approved by the ministry of health. Not be a hospital. Though. The kind of hospital you are going to have white doctors doing kidney transplant. All of those things, I worked them out. I put all the funds together. I went to prayer. And the Lord said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to open a hospital. He said, you'll be the first to be admitted. I said, eh? He said, I didn't send you. It's not part of your calling. I said, Abameo. He said, you'll be the first. The first bed. It is you they'll put there. He said, because you are deviating from your calling. When I heard that, I said, so, this notebook <laughs> that I've written, not all good ideas are God's ideas. Not all open doors are God's doors. Some are traps. Not all breakthroughs are from God. Some breakthrough will break your head. And the Lord said to me, I did this send you. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the idea did not just fizzle out. It died. I went back and they were calling me, sir, we didn't see you again. You didn't come to check. I said, hey, hey, hey. Stop the process. Stop everything. As I told you, so you're going to call the shippers and oh, I had already talked to the people, the customer, they will ship it. How long is it? I've arranged everything. Those ones were calling me. I said, don't worry. When is it coming? I said, leave it. When do we put it together? I said, don't worry. How do we do this? I said, forget it. I'm no more interested. What? I said, I'm not interested. Don't worry. Don't worry. What was that? He spoke to me plainly. Just imagine if I didn't hear that. As you grow in life, you are going to see many opportunities. Many doors will open for you. It's not all you walk through. There are some open doors that lead to nowhere. Can I repeat that? There are some open doors that lead to nowhere. When you enter through the door, you get stuck. It appears as an opportunity. And you can only get to know that when God is speaking to you plainly. Jesus said, these people, why did he speak in parables? Mark 4, 11. He says, he spoke in parables for those that are without. Those that are without. Unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. To them who are outside, to them who are not addicted to my presence. To them who are not addicted to my presence. So God is saying, if you want to begin to hear me plainly, you must be addicted to my presence. Stop 
being out come in stop being out and i told us there are two dimensions of the presence of god there are two two signs and elements of divine presence the first element of design divine presence is the secret place the presence of god is the secret place for he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty the presence of god the bible says in psalm 16 11 that will show me the path of life for in thy presence there is fullness of joy at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore in psalm 51 11 cast me not away from thy presence take not the holy spirit from me in psalm 68 verse 2 as was met before the fire so let the wicked melt before the presence of our god in job 1 verse 12 in job 2 verse 7 the bible says satan came into the presence of God the Bible says in Genesis 4 16 he said and Cain left the presence of God in Exodus 13 33 verse 14 I like what Moses said to God it was like a request the Exodus 33 14 he said my presence will go with you I will give you rest Exodus 33 15 Moses said if your presence does not go with us do not carry us in somebody said divine presence how can somebody wake up in the morning the first thing you do is to jump on your phone and you expect to hear God plainly what is the connection that was why in the days of lockdown come and see abuse of divinity during the period of lockdown abuse of divinity because church was online somebody will wake up with rapper on a chair with a smelly mouth uh, she's looking for YouTube to watch a message of a man of God with unbrushed teeth And as the word is going on there, which our mouth has not been brought, amen. Uzziah is coming up, amen. Lockdown was a period of abuse. <laughs> Am I communicating here? <laughs> in your presence, in your presence, in your presence, in your presence. When you are in God's presence, God begins to give you divine ideas. Ideas on how to run the home, run the family. I had a friend when we married at the same time, you know, he stays in Lagos, and he was talking about the schools to put his children. And um, he told me, he said, I should bring my children to Lagos. They should school in Lagos. I said, why? He said, because he found a school for his daughter. The girl was in, um, they call it pre, pre not KG, pre nursery, pre nursery. And he said he's found this school. This girl was like about a year plus or so. About two years there about. He said pre nursery. And I said, How much the school fee? He said four point two. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, for a girl that cannot talk. Four point two. I said to him, I said, I don't understand. A child that cannot talk. You pay four point two. As a ZT, she graduates. That money, I mean, from that pre, not the T N Y S E. <laughs> he said, No, it's just for the fee. I said, Wait, so after that 4.2, you still pay another 4.2. He said, Yes, now. I said, no, I need to know. A child you are not yet, a child that does not even know what she wants to be in life. <laughs> she doesn't even know if academic is her line of duty or she's going to end up being a, a basketball player. You pay 4.2. He said, yes. I sat him down. And I started talking to him. I said, the first thing you must do to raise up a child is home intelligence, not academic intelligence. A child that, that you give morals must be intelligent. You don't get what I'm talking about. A child you give morals. I began to talk to him about the wisdom of God. Do you know, himself and the wife, had, when I was done by the wisdom of God, he was looking at me confused. He said, I will homeschool my child. I will homeschool. I said, I will homeschool my child. There was no, the wisdom of God came. And I began to talk to him. All my children today, they are not in flamboyant schools of billions and millions. God has blessed me. But God didn't bless me to waste. But today they are sound academically, sound character. 
Because there are some happiness they don't let, they can't learn, they didn't see it in me or see it in their mother. Look at some children. Private school, public foolishness. You see the boy, that's said, I would pay millions for a child. And you feel from there, just go. <laughs> Don't come home. Just follow the school. You now how fail we are. Just follow the school and go from there. Tell them my, my father has disowned me. <laughs> children are becoming, you see, children becoming uh, go to certain schools and they become arrogant. The child is 14, you tell the father and the mother, it's what I want. It's what I want. Even at 18, you have no right to say that. What do you mean 18? 18, according to the Nigerian constitution, the, when you get to 18, you're already an adult. No problem. Go to Nigeria constitution, calculate all the school fees I've been paying for you since you be, before you got to 18, refund my school fees and go and meet Nigerian constitution to pay your fees. So long you are still under my roof, I still fend for you. I decide what you want. You can't decide what you want. I decide what you want. I decide what you want. So long it's genuine. So long it's not against morals. So long it's not evil. Are you following what I'm talking about? Your child wake up. If you are paying the fee, now say, I don't feel like going to church today. You will feel like chopping slap. You don't feel like going to church today. Which house? No, which house? You see? Oh Lord. People abroad are bringing their children to Nigeria to be schooled. Mama has some people, was it from Germany one time? A woman that brought her children from Germany to go to Dynamic. I saw a young man trying to talk to his child. I screamed on the boy. I said, Come and put up your pants. His trousers were somewhere here. And he was talking to me, he was doing like that. And he stretched his hand. So I didn't I didn't stretch my hand. I said, put up your pants now. He said, what is that? He put up your pants. And he was, he was, went down, he was crying. Told the father that I yelled at him. So guess what the father did? He was not trying to explain to him. He said, he didn't yell at you. Actually, what he was trying, eh? <laughs> My father, when I was young, would see me like that. They will explain to me. Five-fold ministry. My father was not like my mom. My father doesn't know how to flog. He doesn't know. It's not his calling. So he didn't flog more often. He can just get you like five out of anger or ten. Get out. My mom was the general superintendent of beating Bible church. And my mother does not beat you when you expect. It's when you are sleeping. Around one, she will now wake you. Are you following me? So then, if we do something wrong, you know what we do? When we do something wrong and she doesn't beat us, we will go and submit ourselves. <laughs> we say, Mommy, flog me now. Not that when I'm asleep, you come and wake me up. <laughs> Not that when I go and sleep, you wake me. Just flog me now. Let me rest. <laughs> because you know that you can't, God has not touched her heart that she forgot. <laughs> she will allow you just lie down like the next thing you hear a horse sweep. No, Koboko. Why? She knee down there. Who are you playing football with? Till 10 p.m. Which feed has light? That you are playing football. No, mommy, when I went to somebody's house, whoa! Be talking. <laughs> Do I encourage flogging? No. Do I support it? No. I don't flog my children. Because I have a kind of relationship with them. That makes me talk to them in a language that we understand. Our parents, they have that with us. Some of you, how many of you grew up in that kind of? All right. Am I communicating now? Spend time in his presence. When you wake up in the morning, spend time. Go on your knees before you grab your phone, before you talk to anyone, talk to him. If you don't talk to God, problems will talk to you. 
Talk to him. If you don't cry to God, you will cry before men. Talk to him. The one that David said, early in the morning, when I lift up my voice. Psalm 55, 16 and 17. As for me, I will call upon God. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. I will cry aloud. You shall hear my voice. Psalm 55, 16 and 17. Not Exodus. Psalm 55, 16 and 17. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. So I will lift up my voice. That's the first dimension of divine presence. Spend time. The second dimension of divine presence is the house of God. There are certain spiritual benefits you begin to enjoy when you are a regular attendee in the house of God. Don't let people tell you that you don't have to go to a place to serve God. You can serve God in your house. That's true. Very correct. They are not wrong. But it's not, that truth is not absolute. That truth is not what? Absolute. When we come together as a family, we make the burden easy. Because at home, you can chase a thousand. But when you join me in church, too, chase ten thousand. When we come together in unity, there's a corporate anointing that rests upon us. <laughs> no wonder the psalmist says in Psalm 122, and that's when I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. In Psalm 84 verse 10, he said, I will better to be a doorkeeper in the house of God. Psalm 84 verse 10, a doorkeeper in the house of my God and to dwell in the tent of wickedness. When you sit down on Tuesday, a Bible study season, one nasty excuse comes to your heart. That is when waste is paining you. That is when chest is paining you. There are people, anytime church service, they must look for something that is paining them. Even if the pain was not there, they must create the pain. I'm, I'm talking to somebody now. On Tuesday, chest is paining me. No, no, no. No, it's neck. No, it has no effect. My head, my shoulder, my knees, my toe. Everywhere is paining me. And, and the, the enemies give you an excuse to put a hole, a lacuna in your spiritual life. There is a benefit you enjoy. You may not see it. The more you appear before his presence, the more certain things are made open. The more you begin to understand him plainly, then you are no more without. You are within. For they grow from strength to strength. Every one of them, as they appear before God in Zion, when we come to Zion, the city of the living God, we are moving from one level of strength to another level of strength. One level of glory to another level of glory. I'm not coming to church on Sunday because I'm religious. I'm not coming on Friday because I'm religious. I'm not coming on Tuesday because I'm religious. I'm coming on Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, every day of the week if it's possible because there's a benefit I enjoy. Am I talking to somebody? Even in the natural life, for everyone who goes to class, there is what they call attendance. There is a benefit you get as attendee. As an attendee, there is a mark. Your department is having, having a meeting. You fail because you have come to church on Sunday. You cannot go for that. You fail because you have come to church. You cannot go for, you cannot go for house fellowship. You are not doing anyone. No, you are not. When we are young, our parents tell us one thing. Whatever I'm telling you now is for your self. For your good. It's the truth. For your good. It's for your good. Whatever I'm telling you now is for your good. It's to help your life. Your spiritual life. 15 times I will attend Church of God mission on that bench in the house. 15 times in a week. You say how? Morning prayer, 5.30. Evening, there must be a department that has a service. I'm there. Monday to Saturday. That's 12. 15 times on Sunday, 5.30 morning prayer. Sunday main service by 9. 5.30 school of wisdom. He had what they call school of wisdom. So three times that Sunday. And if I tell you the distance from my house to church, when Benson Daosa died, I came, I saw my father. My biological father is sitting down here. He told me, he said, when I heard that Daosa died, I was expecting you to come home. That's how much he knew I loved him. Fifteen times. It's not my department, just a department. I will stay around them and take my notes. I just want to hear something. That's what they call quiffy. Christian Women Fellowship International. When the women are having their meeting, I will hide somewhere. I'm listening to their messages on marriage. On the problems of men. So when I'm talking now, people are asking me, you look so vast. 
you seem to know a lot is years of gathering knowledge you seem to know a lot years of gathering knowledge there are times I'm being invited to some multinational companies to come and talk. They'll tell me not to use Bible. I should just talk from academic point and secular point and I will charge them and they will pay me. That one is not Bible. Work of God is free. This one is not work of God. Bankers in this state, in this um, Ouchie, had a, a, a seminar in a hotel. Some of, some of our protocol attended it. Some of you were there. Pastor Paul was with me. You were there. And they call me to come and talk of fidelity. Bankers and retirement plan. They say without using the Bible. When I was talking for like one hour, they were shouting. When I was done, I gave them bill. They paid me. I collected it and I paid tight. There's an oil firm in Ghana that wrote me and said, I want to come and talk to our oil workers and the rest. I give them bill. We are still negotiating the bill. I said, this is how much I will charge you. They said, ah, it's too much. Oh. Are you not a pastor? I said, is pastor work I'm coming to do there? I said, don't try to be conny here. Don't be conny here. This is not pastor work. To remove pastor. You said I shouldn't use the Bible. No problem. We'll do that one. Yeah, thank you. Not be crusade. Not be reviver. Yes! There are some things you come to church on a Bible study. He says, it's not Papa that is preaching. No matter who is preaching, there is something you must learn. No matter who the person is, that revelation you get from that person, you may need it later. There are some of you, you are Sunday, Sunday church. You are not doing anyone. As far as God is concerned, he said, this one is not a reliable person. It's not a reliable person. There is, once you are a person, as I'm talking now, it may be in a Bible study, in a, an evening service, as the man of God is preaching. It is you God is talking to plainly, not in parable, because you are in his presence. He begins to talk to you plainly. When there are some times I will be preaching, for example, there are some of you I may be preaching, it's like I'm talking your life. The only thing left is that I didn't call your name. You are just looking at yourself. Some, you, sometimes maybe you cannot even write. You are just looking. Say, eh? 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 I've seen messages like that. I've gotten countless around the world, different parts of the world. Up to this morning, when I was talking, a Lord was sent to me, say, if not, that I didn't talk to you, I would have said that somebody went to go and tell you what I'm going through. Am I communicating? What is that? Because you are in his presence, he's talking to you plainly. If you are at home, it would have been a parable. I spoke in the youth conference. I had over 10 messages of relationship that got broken. A young guy sent me a test. He said, I'm out of this relationship. Thank you, sir, for this word. He said, you spoke my life. A young man said, we came together. Me and this guy came together. We actually in town, we lodged together. Two unmarried people lodging together. He said, but after your message, we are not going together. He said, we just discovered, we agreed that we have to give ourselves time and just follow the Lord. God spoke to them plainly. When you are addicted to the house of God, apart from your house, church should be a regular place that you should love. Love it. Love it. Love it. Develop interest. Love it. Jesus loved synagogue. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. The Bible said as his custom was. And he came to Nazareth where he has been brought up. And as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. It was his tradition. He loved it. Who are you copying? Is it social media or Jesus? If Jesus was addicted to church. He is the son of God. How many of you know he could have done miracle anywhere? He can communicate to his father in, in, in the room. He can communicate to his father anywhere. But he said, no. There's a principle about the house of God. There's a principle about the presence of God. God said, I'm not speaking to them plainly because they are without. They are without. So I speak to them in parable. Oh Lord, bring me within. Bring me within. That I may hear your voice plainly. I receive passion for your presence. Passion. 
One time I was traveling abroad and I was going somewhere. Uh, I think it was Canada or something. And I sat down. We did the first um, stop. We're doing the second connection. I, I brought out my Bible, brought out my notes, brought out my at the table, and I was studying. Studying and writing, studying. They brought the meal. I said, no, later. They brought again, later. After about three hours, one of the hostess came to me and we squatted and whispered. He said, do you have an exam? I said, I don't understand. He said, are you going to write an exam or a course or a seminar? I said, I said what? He said, the rapt attention with which you have been reading this book. I said, hey! It's not this book, it's the Bible. He said, oh, the Bible? He said, yes. Oh my God. So you are, you are a church person? I said, no, I'm a pastor. Not just church person. He passed church person. I'm a pastor. Okay, I see. Oh, wow, wow. He said, but you are writing so much. I said, yes. It's my life. I'm building my life. I'm building my life. He said, wow, from this book? I said, not this book. Bible! I'm building my life. But what caught my attention? Do you have an exam? Because with this kind of attention to study, refusing to be distracted, that's the period when the revelations are just entering. Refuse that to be distracted. When every time you wake up, the first thing you do, you do is what controls your day. The first thing you do when you wake up is what controls your day. If you take that day to God in prayer, God controls your day. You take it to answering call. You keep answering call. And it becomes terrible when the first call is a useless call. Have you seen people have you seen the uh, uh, stories like when somebody come and see somebody say, ah, this is my day, don't spoil. Now you have first see, have you had things like that? So have you spoiled my day? Do you understand the principle? You wake up in the morning, it's presence. Number two, am I blessing somebody here? Am I blessing somebody here? Number two, you want God to speak to you plainly, not in coded voices, not in coded speech. Not in coded language. Matthew 13. Verse 13 and 15. Matthew 13. Verse 13 and 15. Matthew 13, 13. Therefore I spake to them in parable. Why? Is it because they seeing, they see not. Hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Verse 15. 15. 15. For the people's heart is wax gross. Their ear dull of hearing. Their eyes have they closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, they should understand, and understand with their heart and be converted. That I should heal them. So another reason why God speaks to people in parable is when their spiritual senses are dead. Dead! They are not sharp enough. I'm not, oh Lord, how do I explain this to you? Hmm. Seeing, they see not. Hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. So that tells you, in the spirit, what you see, what you hear, what you understand, controls your spiritual life. How you see, how you hear, how you understand is what controls your spiritual life. Your spiritual sight, your spiritual hearing, your spiritual understanding. Once you are sharp, once you are sharp in seeing, sharp to hear, sharp to understand. God said, because their senses are dead. I don't know if you know, if you are talking to a sharp person, you don't spend time to explain anything. Right? Before you finish talking. Maybe somebody who is mentally not, you have to take time after explaining. Why? Because you are alert. Sometimes when my pastors are talking to me, some people at the airport are here, before they finish talking, I'll say, stop. This, 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 this. Ah, sir, yes, yes, yes. I already know where you are going. If you want to lie to get money, I already know where you are going. You talk as if you need money, you are broke. Leave this story. Leave this one. This story doesn't make doesn't have to leave it. Just leave this story. And the reason you want money is because of this. God, ah, pa, pa. I said this is not prophecy. I already know where you are going. Okay? But when you have a person who is spiritually can see, spiritually can hear, 
God said, no, his ear is full of wax. So I can't talk to him plainly. Let me keep talking in a way hoping you understand it. It's not yet sharp for me to drop it plainly. Your eyes need to be open. Jeremiah 1, 11. God asked Jeremiah, what seest thou? Jeremiah 1, 11. He said, what seest thou? Jeremiah 1, 13. Jeremiah 24, verse 3. Amos 8 verse 2 What seest thou? Amos 7 verse 8 What seest thou? Zechariah 5 verse 2 God we ask you what do you see? Zechariah 4 verse 2 What do you see? In Psalm 119 verse 18 He said open down my eyes That may behold one draws things out of thy law Talking about Balaam Balaam was a man that was supposed to be a prophet in Numbers 24 verse 3, he said, Balaam, the man whose eyes are open. Numbers 24 15 also. The man whose eyes are open. But as soon as Balaam, Balaam was a major prophet of God. But as soon as he lost his power of sight, in Joshua 13 22, the Bible said he became a soothsayer. He died as a soothsayer. A man that was a prophet. When he lost his spiritual sight. Spiritually. They put poison in the food. You didn't see it. You just carry on eat. Boom. And some of you think it's strategy. So you have to be strategic. Say, me, they can't poison me. No. If you give me food, you must test it first. No, I can't, you can't, I can't be eating with you and I leave my food. Like, no, 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 you cannot. You are a baby. Let me tell you, there is something called antidote. Somebody can take the, the antidote of a poison. The medicine of a poison. That will make him immune to that poison. He will eat from the same plate with you. Because he has taken the drug that neutralizes the poison. It will not affect him, it will affect you. So leave all those your local and village and primitive way of escape. It's called antidote. He will take it, sit down, eat with you. And yet the food is poison. And at the end they say, the person will even scream and say, but we all ate there now. I ate with you now. We ate from the same place. He has taken the antidote. It may work for 24 hours. It may work for 48 hours. Are you getting something now? And that is why when we want to eat, we first of all take the antidote. We lift up the food in prayer. That is our own antidote. By the time we commit the food to the Father, how do we do? We pick up the food. We say, I told you, I saw this stretching your hand. Father, I sanctify this food. You can't sanctify food. You can't sanctify food. Food will not go to heaven. Food cannot be holy. You give thanks. Once you say, Father, I thank you. Everything put there. Because God will not collect thanks that he does not deserve. When he brought the bread and fish, did Jesus say, plus God, my not the devil? Did he, did he say, I sanctify this? What did he do? He gave thanks. That's all. When you see that food, stretch your hand. Lord, I thank you for this food. In Jesus' name. That's all. Not going for food. Hey, Father, Lord, the hand that gave it, the mouth that eats it. Oh, Lord, bless the hand that gave it. Those that prepare this food. Oh, Lord, those that grind the pepper. Those that blend the tomatoes. Father, bless them as we eat this food. Let it be nourishment to our body. Those, those are not wrong prayer, but they are religious prayer. Can I surprise you? After you do all those ones, you will still come back to the major thing. After praying all those prayers, you still say, we thank you. Then is that, is that last part God answered? All the first ones was just ritual, was religious. Because you must follow Bible pattern. He lifted the bread and the fish and he gave thanks. God will not, God, <laughs> you are bringing communion. You are bringing scripture on communion. You should bring John chapter 6, not scripture on communion. He took the body and he gave thanks, the bread and the fish. And when he had given thanks, he gave them. He gave them. So don't think you can walk with that natural sense. God has to open your eyes. And Jesus, John 6, 11, and Jesus took the loaves. And when he had done what? Can I ask you a question? Man or Christ, who do you want to follow? Christ, are you following me? 
a human being or Christ who is your model Christ so let's do what he did he gave thanks so he stretched your hand and said father I thank you for this food I receive it with thanksgiving Indeed, that neutralizes nullifies detonates any demonic missile but when the Lord tells you don't eat please don't bind when he said don't eat don't even give thanks just walk away there are times he will say don't eat your spiritual senses are at work your spiritual senses are alert am I talking to somebody here one of my children sent me a message in the morning said good morning dad and I don't know I think after, after um, two days ago after the one that's without number I was replying messages and I replied a message she's based in Benway I replied a message blessings upon you I your mom he said fine I said you are protected I didn't know why I just a casual I didn't hear nothing from the Lord I just sent the prayer three minutes later my phone was on fire they were calling this person was using the restroom when she sent the message as soon as she replied I said amen I just stood up the P.O.P. And the wood, where she was in the restroom, it just collapsed. Brrr, on top. She just left there. She says, sir, not up to five seconds. What happened? There was a word that was sent. And that's our senses we are allowed to collect it. Are you following what I'm talking about? You have to be alert because this word is spiritual. Life is spiritual. God said, I do not communicate with them because they are blind. They are deaf. Somebody say, open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Open my mind to understand. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Open my mind to understand. What does it mean understanding? It means that even when I'm trying to talk to them, they will not understand. Even when I'm trying to talk to them, they cannot grasp it because their mind is dull. Their ear is dull. It's filled with wax. Open my eyes to see. I refuse to live in confusion. I refuse to lack direction. There are people called by God, but they lack direction of the call. They don't know where God has sent them to go. Oh, so the enemy is taking advantage putting a pause and a delay on their life but that is why this service this morning by the power of the Holy Ghost the anointing to decode the anointing to understand the anointing to decipher the voice of the spirit is about to be manifested in your life you will hear God you will understand the voice of God you understand the voice of the spirit you don't serve a dead God you serve a mighty God is the same yesterday is the same today is the same forever when God says yes no man can say no when God lifts you up no man can bring you down God is on your side power is on your side glory is on your side favor is on your side God is on your side grace is on your side power is on your side somebody shout fire 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 Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. Somebody shout fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be upstanding. Be upstanding. Be upstanding. How many of you want to hear the Lord plainly? You have three people asking your hand in marriage. God can actually come to you and say, My daughter, this is the person. This is when you should tell him yes. This is what you should do. This is the question you should ask him. one day I was sitting in my house and the Holy Spirit said to me he said there's a group of people who have arranged to come to town expensively and abduct you that's me with the word they use kidnap or whatever he said this is how they will come this is what they will do they will tell you they are from so so person the person is a governor and I was telling myself but I'll call the person to confirm the Lord said no they have already tapped into his line so if you call it is that line that will pick it they invested 15 million on that project they chartered a helicopter 
15 million. Because at that time, when I go see that man, he uses his helicopter. Any helicopter available, he chatters and says, bring the apostle. So I was on my own. I was waiting for them. I got a call. Bam, 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 bam. It was his number. It rang like three times. The next somebody has come, he said, ah, but God was trying to call you. That period, he was abroad. He had traveled. His line was off. So God's trying to call you. It was a different number that called me. But God's been trying to call you. I said, ah. I saw the missed call. He said, yes, I just told us to come and pick you. We're coming now. I started laughing. I said, okay, I'll do it. Before they came, I've gotten my own people on ground. Let them come. This money will not go waste them. If I say stop, you won't waste your money. You will waste it. I came quietly. I informed a few undercover people. Those ones came from some neighboring places. We came quietly. I came. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Came with security. Yo. Armed mobile, armed army. So, helicopter map park. Is this, is this Azama they call this school? Azama. Azama. Park there. They already had people on ground. There are people in town. Those ones came with car. They came. To, you see. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Bless you. But God said, ah, come, 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 come. Are you guys going to take something? Take something. And I said, message to my people. I said, they are, they are on ground. They sound the ones outside. We did it quietly. I made sure more entered in. Only two were down. So it will be easy to disarm. If you let many on ground, there will be a fire contest. So I said, all of you, come. Ah, we have to pray now. Can't you go like that? Come, come, come. Come up, come up. <laughs> oh. Come up. Disarm those ones that were there. The ones that were up. I said, drop, drop, drop. No, I can't be holding a weapon to pray. Drop, drop, drop. Let me to pray. Let me to pray. When the weapons were down, they swoop on them. Brrr. So I look at them. I say, you see me like this. You want to kidnap or tap your pia? How can I explain? I say, shh. Nobody will hear what happened here now. Just tell that your chopper to just go. Because if we meet him there, to just come. Tell him to just go now. Quiet. If I didn't tell you now, nobody know what happened. Quietly. Took them. They moved them to Benin Street from there. I saw them as a seed. I don't know what happened from there. But a person wasn't smart. Everything looks like what my son in the Lord will do. His number was not available. So I'll just carry my leg. Tell my wife, I'm coming. Oh. Honey, I'm coming. I enter. Rah. The next thing, two, three days, four days, my family can't reach me. Five days. It's not your portion. Oh. But by the voice of God, I was waiting. He told me. When he told me, I was waiting. I was waiting. If you don't hear, God, see, one day of hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, it's more than a, a, a hundred years of living without it. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. It gives peace. But you, you just, you just, you just hear him. It gives peace. Fifteen. To charter the chopper alone from there here to go back is over nine million. So just imagine what they were ready as far as they were concerned. These jackpots. I said, no problem. You will you will spend that money, eh? you will waste it. And at the end, you went to prison. There are many mistakes. Somebody wants to dupe you, somebody wants, as he's talking, the Holy Ghost already tell you. Say, this is fake. When he finished talking, talking, blah, 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 blah. say, are you done? Say, yes. See, if you ever call my number. He said, let's discuss, discuss, discuss what? <laughs> Someone sent me a message with a long business plan. Gave me different numbers of top people to confirm. I called the top people, they said it was true. And the Holy Ghost asked me, why are you calling them when you can ask me? I said, Lord, what do you say? He says, it's a scam. It appeared too nice. It says it's calm. There are many people in this church 
who have forced themselves to want to do certain things. I give them all the signs they should not go into it. They still force themselves until they lost money. So when they come to me, I'm looking at them. Because the signs were there. How can you? I've told you the, the story, and I've told you before, about a young girl who married a young man. As soon as the young man took her to the house in Lagos, locked her in the BQ. I've told you. Locked her in the BQ. Two years, three years, took her phone. Would beat her money tonight. That's where they'll come and feed her. That's where they'll come and take care of her. The mother said, where is my daughter? She says, her brother. She doesn't use phone. He said, mom, you know your daughter is walking back to back. You know she's a serious person. He said, I can't hear my daughter's voice for two years. He said, she's even pregnant. Hey, thank God. Where is she now? She was locked in the BQ. When she was pregnant, that's how the guy would kick her, beat her, she would lose the baby. Always locked there. Serious lock and key. They would throw the food in there for her. Everywhere sealed. When the, man, the girl is beating, the, the man is beating up the lady, he keep asking, why are you doing this? Let me go. One day she was screaming and crying and weeping. That's how the new security man that the person posted to the house heard somebody move closer. Who is here? He didn't know. The lady was screaming and screaming and screaming. And from there started narrating, I've been here for years. Help me. Help me. And let me tell her, God, no, 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 don't tell him. Help me. Help me. Before the place was broke open and he came. They are from this part, this Asian part. When the parents saw her, they almost passed out. But if that girl was sensitive to the Holy Spirit, there are business partners you meet, you become broke. All your money you have, in, you have gathered for years will be lost in one minute in the wrong business. So we have to pray, oh God, let my spiritual senses come alive. I reject spiritual blindness. I reject spiritual deafness. Let my spiritual senses come alive. I reject spiritual blindness. I reject spiritual deafness. Are you ready to take that prayer with me? Yes, sir. Say, my father, my father. My my father, father. My Shout father. it louder. My father, my father. Let the devil hear your voice. My father, my father. Let the devil hear your voice. My father, my father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray, I can hear you. As I begin to pray, let my senses come alive. I reject spiritual blindness. I reject spiritual blindness. I reject spiritual deafness. I reject spiritual blindness. I reject spiritual deafness. Open your mouth and fire prayer now.
in jesus name yeah. we're going to pray this second and final prayer lord give me passion for your presence hunger for your presence hunger hunger one of the ways you know you are becoming passionate about god's presence is the increase in your prayer life if you pray 30 minutes before all of a sudden you discover now that you pray one hour it's like you have not prayed you study two chapters it's like there's this hunger when there's a revival of prayer in a church the bell cannot stop it amen amen cannot stop it people are on fire That's one of the things I'm happy about that Wonders Without Number is doing in the life of people. I, I, I hear that all the time. I hear that all the time. That their prayer life is changing. People are praying. I hear people say, I now love the word of God. I now love prayer. I hear that all, all, all along. I love prayer. I love funny enough majority is from abroad majority majority are addicted to it and there are some of you sleep carry me go everyone wash everyone wash everyone wash I go sleep all right we pray passion this thing is a, is a function of passion hello when you see people who are following God who are crazy about God who are loving God it's passion it's a, they have strength to, no passion releases strength when the passion is there the strength will come are you listening the strength will come when the passion is there the strength will come The strength will come. So there's nobody who's superhuman. People are only passionate. And passion releases capacity. It unveils strength. It unveils stamina. Am I communicating? You become tireless. You are not overusing your body. You are not um, um, overstressing your body. I'm not stressed. Hello? I am not stressed i rest if you think i don't rest then you have a problem oh. i rest a lot i'm not owing anybody i'm not owing anybody now if i pray for you and i say receive it you say you don't want give me back i move out my life i don't have time i don't have time. i rest a lot some days ago i was resting mama got in and saw me resting after bondage without number i was resting nine ten eleven twelve i was still resting one she said ah what's going on i said reserve energy i'm resting in advance for the work i'm about to do i rest so don't show papa should rest i rest more than you i'm, I'm serious the problem you have is that you carry people's issues people are, who are not ready to help themselves there's some people who are not ready to help themselves when i was younger i'll be counseling stupid people somebody who i know is not ready it's like somebody is smoking is complaining by his lungs i'll be praying for healing you finish praying for him you, as he's leaving that place we'll go and buy a cigarette do i do i i don't i don't bother someone like that just come and you have lungs problem i call dr odoka tell him the dangers of smoking this one tell him i don't have energy tell him 
by the time they open their eyes and tell you how many people have died of bronchitis what drunkenness have done to people all those who are telling you drink don't get drunk that deceiving you that's how it starts nobody starts with the intention of getting drunk they start with drinking don't drink at all or else you'll be drunk soon even those who are making um, brewery, brewery companies, many of them don't drink. Brewery don't drink. They don't even like those who drink. They only like to make money from drink. They are not proud of those who drink. If they are proud of those who drink, have you seen any brewery company that use a drunkard for advert? They are ashamed of their customers. Are you following me? A beauty company. Somebody will now. <laughs> this drink. But that's the, that's the end result of that bottle. Am I correct? Why not use the end result as advert? They are not proud of their own customers. They use tobacco. Why not they call somebody who has been smoking for years to come and tell them the effect of smoking? No, they will not. They do the advert and they leave you to make your decision by telling you that smokers, they will tell you, in other words, make your decision. This thing we are selling to you. I'm trying to look for the English word for it. It's an English word of how people absorb themselves of any responsibility. It's an English word. You know, that's what, you see, when I speak, what did they not say? Abused me, I was talking against people taking vaccine. You saw what they were saying about me online. Are you seeing what's happening now? They call me names, so no problem. Saying all kinds of things. Those who took some have called me. I'm not against you, I don't take, take, oh. I'm not against it. But I will not take it. Tell me what, when God spoke to me. I didn't even know all of that until they said that the manufacturers of those vaccines absolve themselves of any responsibility. Every country they send it to, they will tell them to sign. That if there are side effects, you will not hold us responsible. Indemnify. Indemnification. Yeah. In, in, indemnification. When you indemnify yourself, you, you are absolving yourself of any responsibility. In other words, if, any, if this thing gives you side effect, don't hold us. Sign first before we give you. You take the oath of indemnity. You now sign. Our own people, these are our people, they signed. Now, if you are not sure of your product, why should I take it? Are you following me? I'm not against the vaccine at all. I'm only telling you what my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. I have the voice of God and I'm entitled to it. I'm entitled to it. There's no prophet in scripture that was loved. They are always attacked. They are always attacked. But those who follow and appreciate what they say, enjoy longevity. We take this prayer. Passion. When I wake up, I want to feel like praying. When I, this thing that makes me sleep when I open the Bible, before I read Psalm, I'm dozing. I try for two, three days. I can't continue. I try for one week. I'm praying. After that, my prayer life goes down again. I'm on fire for three days. Four days. From Sunday now, I'll be on fire Monday, Tuesday. From Wednesday, I'm getting weak again. Oh Lord, give me passion for your presence. Make me on fire all the time. Say, my father, my father. In the name of Jesus. As I pray, as I pray, give me passion, unbridled passion, for your presence. Open your mouth, turn it to prayer. Pray, 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 pray. My God. <laughs> 
to go. The passion for prayer. I will love prayer. I will love the world. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lift your hands. Holy Ghost, do it again. Do it again in my life. Open my eyes to see Jesus. He is seated upon the throne. Holy Ghost, hold. Again, 